Hey pretty girl club, I'm back with another video today. So today's video is going to be a QA. and a I've been trying to do this for a while now, so I'm going to answer the questions that you guys wrote in the community tab. And um, if you guys have any questions that you want to add that you didn't get to add in the community tab, put, it, put your questions in the comments on this video and I'll make a part two. So let's get into it. So my first, qu my first question was, when you wear makeup, what do you usually put on? So I choose between, I still use Mary Kay makeup because that's my favorite makeup. So I wear a Mary Kay foundation 500 when I do wear makeup. And it's not every day. Like I don't wear foundation every day, just like special events. But it's either Mary Kay 500, color 500, Fenty shade 330. I'll switch between that. And I think that's, I, I sometimes I use NYX, sometimes. I don't, it's like a last resort. Like if I can't find what I really want, you know what I'm saying? I'll go to NYX, but sometimes. I do like NYX concealers though. I have, I use the caramel and I gotta go back and see what color. It's like caramel something I use. So I only do like the base. I don't do blush and eyelashes. I don't even do mascara anymore. I literally only put on concealer, like do like daily, only concealer and my eyebrow pencil. That's all I do. If it's a special event, the most I'll do is foundation, but that's even, I don't even do that anymore. But I used to do, you know, I don't do blush and color and all of that stuff. I feel like you start to do too much with adding colors and stuff. I used to add like glitter and everything, but you know, I realized that, you know, I look better. It looks, I like the look, I like the clean effortless look. I think that's the best way to put it. I like looking effortless in my beauty. So I know concealer really does help with that. Cause it can, you know, it conceals like dark spots and stuff that you might have. But also with darker spots, I use, um, lightning cream on them so they can even out so like un for example like right under my lip i mean right above my lip there's like this thin black line i don't know if many of you guys know what i'm talking about but i've been trying to get rid of it and it's been working you know you can use skin lightening products for what it's supposed to be used for people get so weird about skin bleaching products and skin lightening products and it's like it's useful for certain things like that it's not necessarily to completely change your skin complexion unless that's what you want to do but it's made for a reason so i don't want y'all get weird about oh she's skin bleaching i'm lightening dark spots like i even skin bleach under my armpits i skin bleach my private area so my skin can, and it's working, it's, it's evening out a lot now. So that's what I use. I don't, I don't use too much makeup. Question number two. Growing up where you grew up, did, you, did it add to your confidence in who you are? How did you gain your confidence? So for me, I never had a stable place where I lived. Every three years, me and my family, we would move. I was a military kid. So I never really had a stationary place to live. And that does play a part in, at least it did play a part in my confidence because I can never maintain a friendship longer than three years. And then I had to start all over, meet new friends, you know. And then you, when you're in a new place, like in a new environment, like let's say it's ma majority white or majority Asian communities and you're like one of the few only black kids there. It's an experience that you experience. A lot of racist kids are mean. So there's a lot of racist kids out there. And if you're young and your mother isn't teaching you confidence at home, which mine's wasn't, you go to school with, you know, feeling low about yourself over time. Uh, kids keep bullying you. And that's what happened to me. So every time I was in a new place when I was, let's say, pre- pre-puberty era for me so like 12 and under my confidence wasn't as great and you know I dealt with a lot of racism as a young girl which is not good for your confidence and then if you have a mother that's not 
that helpful in the confidence area. It doesn't help either. So I remember just growing up not feeling that good about myself for a long time. Up until I hit puberty. And then when I hit puberty, that's when I started getting attention from like the opposite sex and even people at church. I would start getting more compliments on you know my I, I was starting to shape my figure everything and then being an exotical played a part too in how I was treated so you know I didn't have a lot of female friends growing up and I didn't understand why until this space so looking back it was because I was an exotical especially when I would go to black communities and try to fit in and I was like why well, I can never fit in I'm black just like y'all but if you're an exotical looking black person your experience is different no matter what they think it should be because you're black you know what i'm saying like i didn't experience like i didn't feel like i fit into the black community even though i was black uh. <laughs> y'all don't belong on this block you'll take her bike oh. the high yellow heifer but maybe it was because of where i grew up i grew up in majority white neighborhoods asian neighborhoods so even the way I was brought up, like my aesthetic, is that the word to use? I, what you call a suburban girl. So I don't have like the black sense. I don't dress ghetto. I'm like the white type black girl. That's what they call the white black girls or whatever they call it. That was kind of my stereotype when I would go to my majority black communities. And I would get, you know, y'all know how it is if you grew up black, like that and try to go around black people, they all make fun of you. So I was always made fun of for a very long time. So my confidence was really low for years. Even though I was getting attention, it was low because at the same time, I was getting bullied by females. And it kind of, if you don't grow up with that foundation of confidence, you think they're telling the truth about what they're saying about you. Even though you, you look in the mirror and you say you're pretty, but then these females are making you feel like you're not even the men are looking at you but you think men are just men they'll fuck anything so it's just this like thing for me growing up i you literally relied on relationships to feel a sense of value that's why i, I was a pick me for a long time i was literally looking for somebody to accept me and any guy that likes me i would go with him because he accepted me even though later on he would use me, you know. But my confidence didn't go up until I am not going to lie to you. Like a year ago. I'm like, I'm 32 right now. And my confidence growing up, I literally depended on outside validation. But for the first time in my life, as of a year ago, is the first time I experienced inner validation where I accepted myself. I had a spiritual awakening, first of all, that's what happened. So that's number one. I found out who I really was spiritually. And then going through therapy for an entire year, learning about why I behave a certain way, past stuff, you know, going through all of those, that shadow work, you start to realize that there was never nothing wrong with you. There was always something wrong with the people around you gaslighting and whatnot and being bullied for years especially after this exotical space came out and i learned it woke me up to a lot of people's behaviors like why do females treat me like this but the men don't and it's jealousy and it's all of these things and so when i learned that i was like i'm that girl because i'm really nice but people don't like me still so i'm like what is that about oh because i'm that girl so when you use that when you use people's hate as fuel as energy take it back you take your power back that way and also i created alter egos that was something i also did so you could play with alter egos too it kind of puts the blame on that alter ego the way you would move i i would do that a lot too so like if you're timid like myself, having an alter ego like me, my my alter ego Nikki, she is my flirtatious side. She's the girl that don't take no shit from nobody. I created an alter ego as like a, a she almost like my bodyguard in more in a sense. It's something I created and it really has helped me because I'm very timid and.
quiet and stuff and I, and to not let people run over me you know i let nikki take over it kind of does work when you create an alter ego you kind of take yourself out of it and it's almost like having a buddy inside of you <laughs> i know that sounds weird but that's how i used to handle it having an alter ego just take over a situation when it got too stressful too complicated somebody was playing with me you know i would tap into another person i don't know why i brought that up but you know basically for me the way i became unconfident to confident is just learning who i am i was always in somebody else's shadow you know i didn't know who i really was i was always suppressing myself for other people's feelings light skin guilt pretty girl guilt all of that stuff you know and i just took my power back i was like forget all of that they want me to be suppressed so they could feel better about themselves. But I'm leveled up. You need to level up too. I'm not going to dumb myself down anymore. When you dumb yourself down, you suppress yourself, your confidence will go down. Your confidence will go down because you're not meeting your internalized beauty standard. You're giving a fuck too much what other people think. You shouldn't do that. So take your power back. Stop feeling guilty about being pretty. Stop feeling guilty about being light-skinned. Because that's they want you to suppress yourself. That's what they want. Stop being... Stop suppressing your femininity. Don't do that. That's definitely... They don't want... They don't like that. Don't suppress your confidence. Don't humble yourself. You know, be conceited. It's okay because... People need to level up and stop hating on the next girl. If you level yourself up... If you level yourself up, you don't got time to think about nobody else. You feel me? So that's really what I did. I just took my power back. I found out who I was and stopped letting other people's opinions of me become my truth. It's not even real. It's other people. Hurt people hurt people. So misery loves company, all of that. Just keep that in mind with people, especially if you didn't do nothing wrong. You're not mean to them and they just don't like you. You, you shouldn't already know what that means. They know what it means. They just pretending like they don't. So just keep stunting. That's all I could really say. Just know you're that girl. That's Just know it. You know, figure out who you are. Take some time to yourself. Figure out what you like. Figure out who you are. I was just watching Tia's reality show, Tia Mori. And she was talking about that. How she's finally taking her power back after the divorce. Because she said she didn't know who she was for a very long time. She went all her life a twin. And then she got married for like 20 something years and she's finally in a place where she's just now figuring out who she is because she's never been alone before. So it's good to be alone sometimes, you know, so we can figure out who we are. You know, it's, it's okay to be alone sometimes. It's okay to be by yourself. You like yourself, right? It's okay to be by yourself sometimes. Just get to know you. Question number three. Do you think there is a different treatment from men being a pretty introvert compared to a pretty extrovert? I think there is a different treatment. And I'm going to say this. I've been more extroverted this past couple months than I have ever been. I used to be very introverted. But I'm starting to learn how to be more extroverted. And I can tell you there is a difference. So what I have noticed... I think being an introvert, people kind of misread you, especially if you're a pretty girl, because you'll get labeled stuck up or like you don't talk to nobody. People think you're better than them type of energy if you're more introverted and it's very misread because we have this stereotype about us. We have this stereotype about us. Sorry, but it's my dog. I'm not going to edit that out, but so... <laughs> when I became more extroverted, I noticed pe I became more like the popular girl. So people, people are almost excited to get to know me, be my friend. Even like the men, the way they treat me, they're more easy to. I don't. I notice they aren't as timid to approach me when I'm more social at work. For example, I've noticed because I. Th Maybe they're thinking like if we're introverted and we're on our phone and we got our earphones in and we're sitting by ourselves, it's kind of intimidating, especially if you're very attractive. 
because I'm trying to look at it from their point of view. And I can get how intimidated it can be because you don't know if she's mean. She don't, you don't know if you're because people fear rejection a lot. And a pretty mean, if she's pretty and she's not trying to be bothered and she rejects you, it's going to make you feel some type of way. So I can understand how people can misread a pretty introverted girl, you know, unless you just like it's like your body language too. people will read when they're trying to figure out who you are when they're judging you and stuff, because that's the only thing you can do when you're looking at somebody and you don't know them yet. You can only perceive them based off of how they appear in body language and whatnot. So if you got your legs crossed, you got, we already got rest in bitch face. A lot of us do. So you got to put that all into perspective as an introverted girl. But if you're an extroverted girl, a lot of the times I've noticed lately, I've been saying hi first to people to let them know that it's okay to talk to me. <laughs> you don't have to be intimidated by me. So when you're introverted, you don't talk first. You kind of wait for other people to talk to you. But that's not going to happen if you're very attractive. And you have rest and bitch face. It's very intimidating for somebody who's not that confident. I'm going to say this, right? I had really had a crush on this guy that was really short. I really had a crush on him. He was like short, short. Short, like two feet shorter than me maybe. But I really th liked him. But I noticed he had an inferiority complex of some sort because he was very timid around me and quiet. He wouldn't look me in the eyes. But he would always want to say something to me and stuff. I noticed he would always try to work up a conversation, or work up trying to say something to me. But when I was introverted, I, no, this was already when I was extroverted. I would say hi to him first because I noticed he would be on the, because I'd be seeing him from the corner of my eye, like trying, about to try to want to say something to me. Maybe he's thinking about what to say. So I already can peep that and I'm like, I just speak first. I'll start a conversation with him first. And that makes people a little bit more comfortable with you know, understanding that you're you're cool. You're not you're not you know. So <laughs> I think there is a difference in the way people move with you. Like if you speak first and they know that you're cool versus just assuming that they'll get rejected if you're more introverted. Because it's about energy too. So I think it depends on the person's confidence levels, too. So, I always made this joke with that guy, like, this could have been us, but she was too intimidated by me. <laughs> like, because I would have went with him if he would have not been so, in, you know, intimidated by me. But it is what it is. You're intimidating if you're pretty. It is what it is. So, if you... You know, honestly, because people do judge us or how they judge us, it might be a good idea if you do want a man to speak to you and he doesn't seem to be speaking to speak first because he's probably just very shy. Because don't let the outside fool you. I've had guys that I thought was very confident looking on the outside because he was very charming and muscled and all that, but he gets very nervous around me. I'm like, <laughs> so don't let the exterior fool you. If a man doesn't approach you, it's because he's probably nervous or something. I'm not even joking. <laughs> so, next question. I don't, Yeah, next question. So, how was it growing up in a church family? Do you find yourself being rebellious at times? So, I wouldn't use the word rebellious. I've definitely grown. So, I had a true relationship with god a very private relationship with god but very true and i was very committed to god i would fast on my own as a kid and everything i would be celibate keep my word to god and i was very i loved god really i genuinely loved god but i noticed at churches i was surrounded by people who were fake christians and you know what fake you know there's a fake christian there's a real christian so as a kid, I, I sense people's energies. I don't know if I'm an empath or whatever, but I can sense the fake from the real people. And that church energy was just weird for me. Grown-ups in the church don't know how to act. They don't, Outside of church, they act like they ain't never been in church. I wasn't even like that. I would go outside of church and still read my Bible. And I was very faithful, but the church kind of 
kind of pushed me out of it. And also, I started doing my own research on, you know, things. And I think God was honestly just leading me because I went from Christian to Muslim. And then I went from Muslim to now I'm a spiritual person. I've done so much research that and then having a spiritual awakening a year ago made me wake up to, you know, how things really are. Um, I don't want to get too spiritual with this one, but the best way I could put it is I felt like God led me to where I am now. It's not necessarily rebellion. It's God waking me up to things not are always what they seem like religion i've learned it's a lot of man-made mistakes and errors in certain books and you know learning all of this and having god guide me in the right direction i've come to a place where i know where i'm at is real um i've had the signs to prove it if you're a spiritual like I've seen synchronicities everywhere from angel numbers giving me confirmation that I'm in the right place with God right now where I am. I'm not rebelling. This is just where I am in my spiritual journey. That's all it is. So next question would be what what's a glow up routine that has changed your life forever? So for so for me, what has changed my life forever has been supplements, you guys. Collagen supplements glutathione msm has changed my life definitely supplements i take them every single day and i'm trying to tell you like i my skin is baby smooth every day Hy hyaluronic acid has changed my life it's the supplements it's the supplements i don't break out anymore my skin is nice and golden and it's just smooth and I, that's why I say I barely have to wear makeup anymore because of these supplements. That's what's changed my life. Let me be very honest with you. The secret to glowy and hydrated skin will always be what you do from within. Including supplements into my routine. I will put every supplement that I, be, that I use every single day into the description box. Because I'm trying to tell you. like I, People think I have makeup on when I don't. Sometimes I'll go bareface to get the mail real quick. And I had one lady in my neighbor one day look at me and she was like, Oh, you got makeup on? I was like, No. <laughs> He's like, Your face is so smooth. And, like, and also, on top of that, drinking a lot of water. I drink uh, alkaline water now. So I think a combination of these things. My skin looks very, like, oh my God, like smooth as it's ever looked. As clear as it's ever looked, as even as it's ever looked. Um, you know, I got rid of the tan for the summer, so I'm back to my, you know, my preferred complexion, and I look good. Did not like the way uneven skin looks. I'm sorry. I don't care what complexion you are. You don't like your skin being uneven, one part darker than the other, one part lighter than the other. You want a, an even skin complexion, and that's what I've always wanted, and I'm finally there. So, yes, supplements. I don't even have to do face mask as much. Because my skin is just... When you take care of your insides, it'll take care of your outsides. It really did. It's just really true. So, next question. How was it in the military in a male-dominated environment? What type of attention did you get? And how hard was basic training? And how did you have your hair for boot camp? And lastly, are you still active for Army or Reserve? Okay, so... The military, <sighs> okay, so I'm going to just tell you right now, if you're a pretty girl and you're trying to join the military, I don't know what it's like in 2024, but back when I was in 2016, when I first joined, there's a lot of men who will... <laughs> There, let's just say there was a lot of sexual uh, assault cases when I was in basic training. In July of 2022, I was assaulted by a fellow officer in the United States Army. I've been dealing with this for a year and six months. Writing letters, writing congressionals, knocking on doors, 
and even having to resort to posting on social media. And after a year and six months, I have been informed today that the officer that assaulted me officially will be separated from the military. Know that this person will not be in our formations brings me peace. On the other end, I just don't feel like I should have had to do all of this. <laughs> this morning I posted a fucking TikTok about how fucking unfair it is that I've dedicated my life to the, mil the military and the Marine Corps and everything that I've done and that I was able to see my fucking perpetrator in court and how much it fucking sucked that he was being forced out of the military that he would be getting an honorable discharge well not even fucking 10 minutes ago I just got word that this motherfucker will be getting retained because it went all the way up across the board everybody said that they would not retain him and the fucking head honcho the fucking cg with all of the proof and a fucking admission to guilt decided that they will retain him and this is exactly why fucking females in the military fucking kill themselves this is exactly why nobody fucking takes us seriously as a matter of fact our drill sergeant got in trouble like i think we was like a week in boot camp or two weeks in and i remember that there was this one female that was there and she was there before my particular group got there because she was behind on passing her p t test or something so when you're behind like you're supposed to be in basic training for i think it's a number of nine weeks and if you fall behind in, like there's three phases in basic training. There's red phase, white phase, and blue phase. And red phase is the worst phase. This is the phase where they basically haze the shit out of you. They treat you like fresh meat on 10. Like it's ridiculous. Like, but it's like, it's the, like we get treated the worst when we're in the first three weeks, which is phase red. So she was stuck in phase red. So she had to stay behind. So when our group came, she was supposed to be in white phase at that point. So our group can be in starting our red phase. So, um, but she would stay behind because she couldn't pass her test or something. So I remember her helping the drill sergeant as like a s assistant when we came. And I also remember a week after we was there, our that sergeant, that drill sergeant that was in charge of us got fired because we had a new guy and he was abusing the, sh he was sexually ab abusing her like behind closed doors. They, these drill sergeants, if they have PTSD and they're training us, they can be extra. And there was another drill sergeant we had who was abusing the shit out of guys who would throw duffel bags at them like it was crazy my basic training experience was terrible i'm just gonna keep it a buck with you but that's just my experience i was in jackson fort jackson south carolina and you know just being in south carolina alone is like and then we was there during the winter time so when we would get in trouble and i had a very bad group i'm trying to tell you so anytime we would get in trouble, they would make us come outside in formation in shorts and a t-shirt in the middle of winter time. It could be like 30 degrees outside and we would have to stand out there for hours because we got in trouble. That was our discipline. That was the bullshit we had to deal with for our first three weeks. Standing outside in the cold for hours because people couldn't keep it together in the... Because we did get separated by sex. So females in the one side and males on the other side, but men are gonna be men wherever they go and there's a lot of sneaking around in basic training a lot of people got caught trying to do things in the laundry rooms and stuff like so as far as the way men treat you in the army if you're very pretty you're gonna get harassed there was a couple of pretty girls there was a couple of us and either they would be secretly sleeping with a drill sergeant, sneaking around with one, because they will take advantage if you allow it. There's been a lot of cases since I've been in with people that I knew personally who were getting sexually harassed. Um, 
I myself had had a sergeant on me and and on Patreon I told a story about that situation where I actually ended up dating dating a sergeant for a little second when I was inside the, when I was inside when I was in the army so I mean rank doesn't matter I actually had to my main personal sergeant was even trying to flirt with me sometimes so men have no chill in the military but it really does depend on the unit you go to as well maybe some units um, have more integrity than others men will be men uniform or no uniform <laughs> i mean that uniform don't make them any less more then they who they are before they came in and i'm just being honest there's hood niggas in the military there's dust all over the military racist people in the military we all wear green but we all ain't the same so you have to just have discernment when you do join the military because um Sergeants and higher-ranking people will try you. Um, even people who are the same rank or lower, it doesn't matter. Drill sergeants, they will try you. Just be careful in the military, you know what I mean? Just protect yourself. And then as far as my hair goes in the military, so, you know I have four, type 4C four hair, type 4A mixed. So... Going in the military before I went in, I had got my last touch up, cause I had and I got a cut too, so it was a really low cut, almost like a knee long cut. Before I went in, and so when I got in, you're there for nine weeks, and every once in a while they'll let, allow us to go to like, there's these small PX stores. Like, they're convenience stores for basic training people. So, they have only so many, you know, Walmart basic products. So, for me, I would get, like, the olive oil or the pink. Because that's close. That's what we use sometimes. Like, the cheaper brand stuff. It's not good for our hair, the cheaper stuff. But that was the closest thing that I was used to or familiar with. So, I would stick with those products. Until... I think in white face, we were allowed to receive mail from family members. So I would receive mail from family that would send me the products that I needed from back home. So there's that too. But my hair was struggling in the military. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have my hairstylist and I didn't know how to do my own hair. We didn't have perm boxes yet. We didn't get perm boxes till AIT which is after basic training where you can actually go to the real PX, which is like basically the on base Walmart, <laughs> best way to explain it, the PX. So, and the commissary or whatever, so. But in basic training, you don't get that perm box option. So my new girlfriend was coming and it was terrible. We couldn't have, we couldn't do our braids and nothing. It wasn't until we uh was about to graduate is when i we all the black girls in my particular unit had to bet beg the drill sergeant to allow us to go to the black hair salon around the corner before graduation because our hair is not like white people's hair we literally had to have a one-on-one -on -one with our drill sergeant because he wasn't understanding he wasn't gonna let us go at first we had to talk this was before the crown act was passed and I remember black drill sergeants even talking about it when I was, you know, assigned certain duties. Because every now and then when you're in basic training, you get assigned to do some type of a task. I forgot what they call it, but um, it's like a rotation. And every rotation you would either have to clean, like what, mop the floors or serve in the the defac which is the meal area where everybody eats at and every once in a while you're a volunteer no it, it's not even a volunteer you go in rotation and when it's your turn to serve the soldiers it's your turn it's kind of like 
It's kind of like a uh, like a registered assignment. I don't know any other way to put it. Let's say there's 100 people, 100 females in the whole platoon. So every f six people would be in rotation. And when your name comes up, you would either have to mop floors for that night. You would either have to stay up in the middle of the night where everybody sleeps to stay on guard. Because somebody always had to be on guard awake. And we would just rotate so we can all have a turn to either stay on guard and then some everybody else go to sleep. It was like training for like war because in war, one you can't both everybody can't be all asleep. You get attacked, so somebody has to always be awake. So we would train for that even at night in basic training every night when it was your turn to be on duty. You either had to do something to that effect, which was serve the defect, serve as far as being on guard. I for, I forget the terms. It's been so long. Um, or you would have to mop. I remember having to mop. And I remember one day I had to like clean one of the rooms in the area where the drill sergeants hang out. And I remember overhearing one of the black drill sergeants. She had natural hair and she was talking about how they don't have products for the soldiers and they need to do something about black people hair. So it was a thing. With, this was before the Crown Act was passed. So it might be different now. They might have more products catered to black women in basic training now, but back then it was a struggle. Luckily I had somebody who knew, did know how to do hair that was there who would give me like cornrows or something. Cause it was just, it was a struggle. I ain't even gonna lie. So the duty station that I was stationed at was in Kansas, Fort Riley, Kansas. And um, it's a lot of low key racist people out there and one of them was my first sergeant so i remember when we went overseas to germany and the black girl's hair was starting to be a problem because out there there's no products for us so there was at least eight of us black girls and we had our hair and some was cornrows some braid long braids like i had long braids when we first left for germany in Poland and I remember our first sergeant pulling one of the sergeants aside and having her her talk to us about our hair it was like a meeting for the black girl's hair I was like are you serious so cuz you cuz they don't understand that there's no products for us in Europe so our hair is acting weird right now <laughs> So they don't understand that, and they just saying that we gotta fix our hair, and I just thought that was so crazy. So, if the if you have a good unit, you might not have to deal with any of this, but you, the first time around, I don't think you don't get to pick your duty station. I didn't get to pick. I didn't want to go to Kansas. They act like you get to pick where you want to be stationed when you're in basic training but that's a complete lie <laughs> it's a complete lie so but yeah um yeah hair in the army it, you probably better off locking your hair even that is kind of like you still get new growth though so it's a challenge you might have to go all natural just straight up and because the crown act i think is now protecting soldiers in a different way than it was for us back then so it might be a lot easier now than it was as a black woman with hair in the military especially in basic training that shit was horrible <laughs> there was no product for us so my hair went through a period of struggle for a second while I was in the army. But as soon as I got out the army, my hair got healthy again. So, And I am no longer active. I'm a veteran. I'm actually, I was rated at the VA 90% dis disability because of my anxiety and depression was so bad when I was in. So that was my rating. So... I um, am not able to go back in, I don't think. I'm not sure. 
So I'm not reserved. I'm no longer active. I'm just a veteran now. You, but you will receive male attention when you get in. Just don't even. <laughs> it's gonna be probably. I'm not even gonna lie to you about this. Unless you have, you happen to have a place where you get stationed as. You're lucky enough not to have to deal with that. If you're lucky enough not to have to deal with that, cool. But my experience, I knew people who were sexually harassed. I was axed out by people who were way higher in ranking than I was. Um, it didn't matter what rank they was. That's the craziest part. Um, they will try to flirt with you, sexually harass you. They feel like they can almost get away with it sometimes. Even um, when they're off duty and you go to the, like the clubs where military people hang out, I remember going to places where military people hang out, out outside of duty and they have no chill. Like they almost are worse to me as far as their behavior. So I've never had a pleasant experience with a military guy. It was, it's like that's their thing. Like especially, and I'm just gonna keep it all the way up, but when. People go overseas and they're in the military and they're married. They mess around with other people while they're overseas. People you wouldn't even think would do it, do it. It's like a, it's like almost normalized. I ain't even gonna hold you, so. I don't know, it's kind of like when you're out there with people you are always around, you have to live, cause it was co-ed. I lived in a coat when I got out of basic training out of AIT and I was stationed and we had to get deployed overseas. We lived in a co-ed dorm and I'm trying to tell you it's <laughs> people were married. And if you are on Patreon, you already know. You already know what happens. So, but yeah, it's a thing. Married people mess with people overseas. overseas. It's People only get, a lot of people only get married in the military just for the benefits. So, because you get more benefits. You get a home. Um, you get to live in a home. You don't have to live in the barracks. You get an actual, you get to stay in an actual home. You get more pay. It's just, it's more benefits with that. So people get married on purpose a lot. So people aren't even really in love. So you, if you got, if you're in love... You might have a good one, but I've just seen people, even females who are married, get in, like it's crazy. The, mar the military is a mess, filled with people who are messy. So I'm just being honest with you. I wish I could have a nicer answer for you for this one. But my experience in the army was not that pleasant from beginning to end. I couldn't wait to get out. I, w I only did like half of a contract. But my situation was different. I came in as a, technically a single mother because I was married, but the guy I was with was in prison. So that technically makes me a single mother. So it was kind of like my my recruiter wasn't supposed to let me in and any of that, but he did. And it, I ended up paying for that later when we were deployed and stuff. And I was like, I can't keep leaving my son like this. And so I got out under family care chapter plan and got out honorable discharge, just fine. But because I kept going to sick call because of my anxiety, when I applied for the VA, I ended up with a high rank. So because my anxiety was that bad in the military, I ain't even gonna lie. I was out of shape when I first got in. So make sure you're in shape months before you come in I, I felt like i was behind i felt like i was even supposed i wasn't even supposed to graduate on time but they let me slide i'm i'm not even kidding it's like no child left behind no soldier left behind it gave that i swear i wasn't supposed to i, I swear i thought i felt my pt test at the doing blue phase which is when you graduate you get that last pt test score where you graduate or not and I swear I thought I felt, but I ended up graduating anyway, so. But yeah, AIT is the worst. 
AIT is like college because the because when you're in AIT because when you're in basic training they separate you by sex they do the same in AIT but the problem is we're all in the same building in basic training we wasn't even in the same buildings together so we couldn't just people couldn't sneak with each other in AIT people used to do that all the time like it was wild it's like college but a co-ed dorm college if you ever had that experience but it's all military people and people of different races people have different personalities it's just it's wild so it's quite an experience it was more fun in AIT but we kept getting in trouble so we would lose our privileges like we could go off base and everything for the weekend but we would lose these privileges if we get in trouble it was just a hot for me it was just a hot mess but i met some very cool people in the end you know i got respect i liked it that part when i would go to the airport in my uniform and people would clap for us and just you felt respected and valued you know what i'm saying so the appreciation part i do miss that i miss the uniform itself it made me feel, I don't know, important. <laughs> I don't know. So, you know, it was cool while I was in. I mean, it wasn't cool as far as the overall experience. But when I think back, like, the people that I was able to meet, where I got to go, Germany and Poland and Europe, I got to experience living in Europe. So, I, I mean, I have to find the things to appreciate in those things, even though I hated my duty station. <laughs> But men will be men wherever they go. There's dust everywhere. Don't get, don't let the suit, no, the uniform fool you. There's just dust everywhere. Next, next question is: I heard you was a Pisces, so am I. What signs did you get along most in your life, and what signs you didn't? So honestly, I'm new with horoscope. I just know I'm a Pisces, but I know I don't get along with Gemini's. I don't get along with Sagittarius women. I can't stand Sagittarius, no shade. If you're a Sagittarius and you're a subscriber, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the people that I have experienced in my personal life. I don't take, I don't project on the other people. You you not be, you might be a cool Sagittarius, but the ones that I've met in my personal life have just given me straight hell in my own personal life. But you know, other than that, I don't really know too much about the other signs. I'm still learning. I still have to learn more about astrology to really answer that one. I just know about my sign because I'm a Pisces and I notice all Pisces act alike. <laughs> I'm very affectionate. I'm kind. I'm sweet. I'm, f um, what else? So we are, um, sensitive to people's emotions, what have you. I'm definitely that. I'm almost an empath. I borderline read people's minds. Like, it's weird. <laughs> so, last question. Will you ever show your ca face on camera and have haters... And have haters made you reluctant to do so? Oh, yeah. I plan on showing my face on camera when I reach 10K followers. I already told you guys the majority voted yes. So, I will be showing my face when I reach 10K followers. Haters ain't going to stop me. I've been suppressing my beauty for so long. I've been hiding my beauty for so long. No more. So when I reach 10K, when I can get me to 10K, we will get there. But yeah, I'm not going to let these haters run me off the internet. Um, As much as I want to protect... It's kind of just like, fuck it. It's, um, it's fucking YouTube. Like, As long as I don't show my address, I don't, I'm not really too worried about all of that. I'm kind of excited because the, the type of content that I can add to the library of videos that I have, I can add, you know, wake up with me's, um, how do I do my makeup routines, how I do my hair, haul, like clothes haul, co clothing hauls. I can do more things. So it's, I'm excited about it, but I'm going to do it when I reach 10K, so... I can get me there. I'm just trying to show y'all a little sneak peeks of myself, you know, throughout my videos by covering my eyes and stuff, showing only my mouth and below. But, you know, I'm teasing y'all right now, but 
I will show my face, I promise. So I'm not gonna let these haters run me off the internet. You know, people need to see me, so. Yeah, um, I'm gonna do a part two. If you guys have any more questions, my dog will not shut up. <laughs> but if you guys have any more questions, let me know. I wanna get this video out to y'all today, so I'm gonna wrap this up now. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.